Hello buddy, this is Dr. Novak. Uh, the reason this video is being made is uh, I'll have a little Q&A at the end, but uh, laterite and under gravel filters seem to be getting a little hard to get. Uh, one person reported to me that Amazon is back ordering the laterite that they were selling and under gravel filter plates seem to be a little harder to obtain. But anyway, um, if you're thinking about making a plenum with the under gravel filter plates that are already pre-made, like the one shown here, um, you just may want to look around and get your purchase beforehand because I called up a PetSmart, a Petsco, and they were out of the under gravel plates and I heard from somebody who watches my channel that they seem to be coming a little rare now where people are having a harder time getting these under gravel plates like this one that you see that I bought off of Amazon that's made in China. So I would suggest to you that if you are thinking about building a plenum and you need your laterite and you need your under gravel plates that you do not procrastinate too much because they seem to be running out and you can tell this is becoming more popular because I just watched a video from Aquarium Co-op for example and he talks about uh, when he was talking one of the questions that was asked of him was once again under gravel filter plates it's kind of funny that all of a sudden he's talking about filter plates when they've been around since the 40s and all of a sudden Aquarium Co-op is now talking about under gravel filter plates. So if that shows you anything, a lot of people are starting to watch these videos uh, that I am making off the internet or the internet now is getting more involved in an anoxic filtration system and into the plenums where people are starting to think twice about just putting their substrate directly at the bottom of aquarium. So if you're looking for one of these plates, I would highly suggest that you go out and you buy your plate immediately. Like other hobbyists have done, like for example, this particular hobby sent me a picture of his tank with his uh, under gravel filter plates that he uses. This is one that you just snap together, kind of like the kind I used in my 90 gallon aquarium. And of course, this is my 90 gallon aquarium, which I showed everybody. And these are just snapped together under gravel filter plates. So don't pr procrastinate anymore. Maybe you ought to think about getting everything that you need. Anyhow, uh, I got a letter from Mumbai, India, and uh, the guy is uh, uh, Joseph Paul Milton, and he sent me this letter, and he wanted me to answer some of his questions or maybe try to help him out. This is his aquarium, and he just took these pictures today, and I received the email today, and uh, what he needs to know Exactly. He's from uh, Mumbai. He says, but I am from the south. Uh, I did my setup uh, four foot by two foot by two feet freshwater planted aquarium last October. So it hasn't been up a year. And he uses uh, two canister filters, one pumping 1,200 liters per hour, the other one 1,000 liters per hour. And he uses ADA substrate. And he uses pressurized CO2 with a reactor. And he says, my problems are as follows. Stones and glass are covered with green algae lightly in a week's time. And I clean my tank regularly every Saturday for algae and change 50% of the water. Okay, that's pretty good, changing 50% of your water every day. pH is 7.5. TDS is about 160, which is good. I use API ammonia test kits, nitrate test kits, which shows zero parts per minute. 
Now, I don't know if he's saying his nitrates are zero parts per million or his ammonia is zero parts per million. Um, or are they both zero parts per million? Let's see. The temperature of the water is 32 degrees centigrade, which if we convert that to the United States, that'd be about 89 degrees. That's a little hot, a little warm. Uh, planning on getting a chiller. All my red plants have melted away, while as you can see in the picture, green plants are better. I like to have a good red plants. And uh, anyway, well, as you can see by the pictures here, the green plants are better. I like to have red plants. Okay. I use uh, Tropica fertilizer and some local fertilizer. Well, when when he says he's using these fertilizer, he could be adding nitrates to the aquarium. And when does he add them and how much does he add them? Adding to the aquarium, as I explained in my video, can make a big difference on algae. If you just pour a cap full in right away, the algae is going to like that. And if the plants can't utilize it immediately, well, the algae will. And this could be one reason why his glass and rocks and stuff are constantly getting algae on them because his plants can't utilize that much liquid fertilizer all at once. Okay, I, I think I explained that in one of my other videos. So you may have to do your fertilizer by cutting it down and adding a little bit every day then adding a cap full or a squirt full or whatever they say because by the time that the plants can use all that. The algae is already far ahead of the plants with that extra bit of uh, fertilizer that you're giving it. Let's see. In one picture, there is a lot of black algae. I guess that's this photo right here where the rummy nose is right on the uh, left-hand side. I guess that's it. Not very clear. And leaves have black spot uh, and black algae. Also, the Anubias have black spots. Since I couldn't not get a phosphate pad, I put in filter. I put in the filter Fosgard, and it has been running for at least four days. Okay. Well, it may be a little bit of phosphates, but if you're adding in once again your fertilizer, like you are, this would explain why the algae is taking more control than the plants are. Let's see. A lot of fish have died in regular intervals. Now this is what was interesting when I read this. It's like, wow, this guy's really having a problem. About 12 neon tetras, 18 odocinclus. Well, odocinclus, mm, not everybody has good luck with odocinclus and they could wind up dying on you. They could be anybody though. 10 cardinal tetras, six of my rummy nose, six angelfish have died within five months. That's a lot of fish. Fish are fed twice daily, but very little, and use a variety of food. Well, see, the food could be adding phosphates and nitrates once again to the aquarium. Okay, and if your plants can't utilize it, trust me, definitely your... Uh, Algae will utilize that extra nitrates and phosphates that you're adding in for your plant. And don't forget, the fish alone are creating ammonia along with your organic matter in this aquarium. And that is going to aid in the abundance of algae that he seems to have. And the plants at that temperature are not going to work at 100% of their best. And as you can see here is drop checker is green so he's running it at 30 parts per million his uh, CO2 let's see I sincerely request your advice particularly on how much wattage lumis I require and need for, to grow good carpet and red plants the aquarium lights are so expensive and I request you provide what type of LED wattage colors and how many so I can build my own. I'm a bit of a handyman and can fix mechanical electrical problems. Buying online is not possible due to lockdown. Also, every equipment for the hobby is very expensive. I have been most of your videos and also one on light but confused. 
If you could suggest anything at all, I would be grateful. Okay. Um, as you can see, adding more oxygen is one thing he needs. As you looked at the photos that I've showed you, he's really not adding a lot of oxygen to his aquarium for 89 degree tank. Now, anyone knows what once you get up to 89 degrees, you're going to have to have a lot of oxygen. Another thing is, are his plants photosynthesizing? In other words, he didn't tell me that after I turn the lights on, an hour or two later, I already have the purling bubbles coming off of my plants. So I don't know if his plants are running at 100% of capacity. Another thing he has is he has his substrate directly at the bottom, so we know that he's not bringing in nutrients and stuff back and forth through the substrate, and he also could be creating more ammonia. Okay, most of the time when I have done this, and I'm speaking from just me personally, when I have put my substrate in the bottom, even though it's an inch or two inches, usually the tank does exactly what his is doing. It starts getting covered in algae, and I've never had great success doing that. So that's one thing I would probably change immediately, and I would try to add um, a plenum to his system. And he's not going to really lose anything. He just may have to buy more substrate. But if he's handy, he should think about just putting his tanks in a container and uh, going with making the plenum. That will add a little bit of oxygen. But as we're looking at this picture here, right, you don't, I don't really see any air bubbles. I don't see any oxygen for 89 degree temperature. The fish themselves could be just suffering from lack of oxygen because I don't see his plants really photosynthesizing. And once they photosynthesize, as we all know, and create oxygen bubbles, that means your aquarium is at the maximum capacity of oxygen it could carry for that temperature. So he's not really telling me if he can. If he's going to try to make lights, I don't know what lights are available in India, but try to stay from the blue spectrum and go with the other spectrums like the warm light, the bright white lights, and there's no reason that the, those particular lights should not work for them. Because if you think about it, we used to have uh, aquariums grow very, very efficiently off of incandescent lights which would be your warm light or your bright white light, which carried very little in the spectrum of blues and red. And yet we had beautiful planted aquariums with those lights. Uh, the only trouble is, is they got hot and they weren't very efficient with the electrical consumption that they had. But right now we're looking at his aquarium. It's, it's really not bad. Of course, he said he had been cleaning it which means he's he's taken it out and his plants that he has has red on them which I can see and that looks like Harnworth maybe he's got and it looks like if it has red so his red plants could could be melted away not because it could be just temperature alone taking those uh, almost 90 degree temperatures but he's got to work with what he's got. And I'm not seeing a big problem. He's trying to solve the LG problem. That problem may never be solved. Plus, he's adding in fertilizer. He could be adding more fertilizer than what he needs. Okay. He's just adding too much to the system, and the system can't handle it. Because he didn't explain if his plants were photosynthesizing or anything. And the lighting system that he's using from what I looked up quickly, is only for the India, Indian market for India. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's a light available here in the U.S. It could be available in Europe, I don't know, but that seems to be for the market. And from the comments I see, some people like it, some people complain about it. Uh, it looks like a nice little light fixture. But those are information I don't have 
is are your plants photosynthesizing? Are you getting to purling? Okay, he, he didn't say that. How much of the fertilizer he's adding, he could just be adding way too much. And of course, he has a substrate directly at the bottom, which he would have to correct. So the only, that's the only thing I can help. Get the temperature down, get some more oxygen in, in, that, in that aquarium, then cut back on your fertilizers and then see what happens with the algae problems. So that's about it in this video. Until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you very much for watching.